Hey, I will say everybody we knew, including the group from here, wanted to text and know how you doing, how everything's going. I never had so many texts and calls and emails my whole life. And Facebook, yeah, lit I figured, up. I figured you was getting blown up. So that's well, why I, once you sent the text, I was like, I'll talk to them when they get yeah, back. Yeah. I was like, man, it's. As well, long I got as, confused. I told everybody the surgery went well, but then the surgery was the next day. Well, the pre, really, it's really the pre-meeting not a, went speak well. Speak it. No, speak really it into not, existence. No, I think you were right. It's really uh, not a surgery. The, uh, it's a procedure. It's an implant. Yeah, they had yeah. to go in. Yeah. You know, and then they did a... Sai's got breast implants. Uh, kind of. What happened, Sai? Uh, I, I mean, got, they're behind hey, I got breast. six pieces of plastic uh, see? in my airways. That's what I'm talking about. So Just like a breast implant. You could tell an immediate difference. Oh, yeah. I mean, just that quick. Yeah. Like when you woke up. Are we rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. Of course we are. Size most, back, everybody. The most amazing thing is, out of all this junk, there was no pain. None? None. <laughs> not, Soreness, not for you. Soreness, yes. <laughs> and like I can tell you, I'm like a, I feel like a battery that's on its last little bit of electricity left. Because it, it's rough. Well, let's plug you up, son. That's why you plug and then, you up just hey, like And that. then the bad part I don't want to tell you right now, okay, and this is part of it. Every once in a while I cop up, you know, blood. It's curdled blood. Yeah. My body is trying to make buttermilk <laughs> out of my blood. <laughs> That's buttermilk, si. Huh? Buttermilk. Butter what a or on the way to making butter. What a great it's attitude. Collaborate. Okay. Can we just. Well, now a little bit of that's normal. The doctor said it would. He'd yeah. be, that'd be a little bit normal. Yeah, so I've already called him. I said, "Hey, I said, I told Christine, I said, call Tony, Doctor Connolly's nurse, Doctor T. You know, ask her how long am I just supposed to go on? I know it's you know it's expected. You know, to cough up a little blood because you put some foreign implants in my body. So yeah, <laughs> I want to see what it looks like. I don't. I, I was just fixing to say. Well, hey, right over here in this cuff. You, you, you got some with you? Yeah, I got Show it to Johnny D. No, no, hey. No, there's no need. I'll let him report. Hey. Oh, that report. looks like that Vienna sausage he ate. <laughs> that is. That's, that's that jelly. That's rough. <laughs> well, no. I'm glad you're here, man. Well, no, no. That's why I said that. This is a tough deal here, I'm telling you. Out of all the things Sai's done in his life where he ain't coughed up blood, <laughs> The one thing that's going to save him and keep him oh, here no, a little yeah, bit longer yeah. is making him cough up blood. Yeah, yeah. That's just, hey, life's funny, man. Well, let me tell hey, y'all. No, no, hey, and I'm telling you, this body that God gave us, mm-hmm. it's amazing. Ain't it? Okay, I'm serious, you know. Just good grief. I mean, you think about it, you putting some foreign object in your body and make your body work helps you make it better. Yeah. Johnny D struggling. Over no, he's there. struggling. Yeah, there's a reason I got... Into nursing school, then never. Well, I didn't. Oh. I, I didn't apply, but I was ready to, and I was gonna go. And I was like, oh, you no. know what? Since you brought that, I'm up, weak at the stomach. I can't do this. <laughs> Kudos to the Methodist Hospital in Houston. Absolutely. Thank you to them, to the sure. doctors and the nurses and all the staff that worked there. Very I professional. I received excellent care and the most polite people I've ever met. And and I was there to witness I'm these sure. guys. Yeah. Did any oh, of them, hey. did any of them listen to us? Huh? Oh no. That, hey, I mean I couldn't get no rest. Okay, but you don't go to the hospital to rest. <laughs> what you go there for? Uh, you go snowball. there to get repaired. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but just about the time you fix to get some sleep, <laughs> oh, we got to draw blood. We got a sticky over here. We got a sticky there. You know, What's but that? hey. They know what they're doing. They I've, that's the finest care I've ever received. Let me let me tell y'all this. When when we knew now, this has been a couple of years trying to get this procedure done, and um, when we knew we were going, we talked to the pilots for patients out of Monroe, and they are a non awesome squad. Oh yeah, non financial yeah non profit financial. Yeah, my yeah. old boss flies for. Yeah. Who is that? Wayne Peters. Okay, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, There's that's a picture of him. Thing. There. Mm-hmm. Unsung heroes. Yep. So they okay. just flew y'all down there. Yeah, so. they flew us down there, yep. and they had plans to fly us back. No charge. Then they've got a group on the ground they call angels. Yeah. Okay, that take care of the ground transportation from the airport to the hospital. Absolutely. I mean, it was first class. It was. Yeah. 
It was awesome. They they uh they loaded us up. Then we actually had another patient fly with us. Mr. Billy? Yes. I, I used yeah. to work for his daughter for yeah. a long time. He's a good dude. Yeah, he's real cool. You gotta understand, guys. Hey, no finances, period. The pilots do it for free. They bring their plane, fly their plane. They don't get paid. Okay. The people that, you know, pick you up and take you to the hospital and bring you back, all that, they don't get paid. Just It's all volunteer work. You know, servants taking care of the American people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, I recommend flying with Wayne anytime because he done crash twice and he's still with us. <laughs> well, no, no, because, hey, that's what I... He obviously knows how to put one down. Well, no, no, because, hey, that's what I told the guy in the Army. Yo, I said, yo, he was a tank, tank man, okay? I said, you ever get shot up or shot out of a tank? He said, oh, I've been shot out of six of them. And he's still here. Yo, and I said, well, wait a minute. I said, why wouldn't you want He said, hey, look, if you, if you got to go, he said, I ain't walking. No. <laughs> he said, I ain't walking. He, he said, I could never make it in infantry. He said, why walk when you can ride? You know? There you go. Amen I said, yeah, but you got blowed out of six of them? I said, that's pretty dangerous. You know? He said, well, hey, it's better not be. He said, just think of it this way. You got armored protection all around you. Yeah. He said, they got to have a big gun to get you out. I said, well, I understand what's saying now. That's wild. No, that is cool. People step up and do that kind of stuff. Just out of the kindness of their heart. No, no, like, yeah. So uh, the first day when we get there, we know the next morning when we get to Houston Methodist, we know the next morning we have got to be where the procedure is going to happen, and it's about a mile away. I mean, this place is huge. In the same building? Yes. They've got buildings, That's why towers. you go to Houston, man. Yeah, this place That's is why we need pilots for patients. Well, hey. Yeah. This is, this is called a recon operation. So here's what I did. I said, so I, I said we got to figure out a way to get you from here to there. But the golf cart people, they don't show up till 8. we got to have him there at 6. So I walk around, I'm looking, and I asked the information desk. I said, uh, we need to get a wheelchair. Can you help us out? And he was like, man, you're on your own. All the wheelchairs are gone. I mean, by this time, first thing in the morning, people are getting them. you got to go down to the basement and see if you can find one. And good luck doing it. I was like, man. So I went, some old guy was driving a golf cart, and I asked him, I said, do you know where any wheelchairs are? And he was like, what you going to do? And I told him. He said, well, here's what you need to do. He said, you need to commandeer one of these wheelchairs, take it to the hotel where y'all are staying, <laughs> hide it in your room, and have him come over here about 5.45 in the morning and take him to his appointment. So I come walking in the door, knocking, bringing a wheelchair inside. I said, hey, what is that for? I said, you never saw anything. Nothing ever happened. <laughs> Do not worry about what hey, this is. That's right. This is one of them. You did not see this. Commandeering uh, wheelchairs. Had to do it. But you got him, man. Oh, I oh we like, got him. Hey, I could have walked. Oh, no. If Christine and them would come walking in. They'd be out of breath. So I'd get out the long walk. <laughs> and I said, yeah, okay. So then we first started, and when I was talking about, okay, a doc said, okay, I'll come in tomorrow morning, and you know if everything's good, I'll release you. Well, he come in and said, okay, I'll release you. So this was at 9. So I, I told him, I said, hey, one of the nurses come in, I said, hey, hey uh, y'all got my discharge notice? And he said, no. So then another one come in, I said, hey, you got my discharge notice? <laughs> so I'm ready to go. You ready to get out of there? Yeah, I'm ready to he, get he's out. He's already of impatient. Bust, bust him out, boys. So we leave about one. Oh well, let's let's tell the story on 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 how we got to that point. So, look, when they call Cy back, me and him were over there at six a.m. We're ready for anything, and they we thought it'd be a couple hours because we had to fill out a bunch of paperwork. Well, his wife gets there, but she don't get there till about seven. They've already taken Cy back. <laughs> And they're doing all the preliminary stuff and asking a bunch of questions. But the first thing is, Cy putting on that hospital gown. He said, I got it, I got it. I said, Cy, let me help you. Ha, 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 I got it, I got it. I'm putting it on backwards. Now, he's got it where the flap's in the front. He's walking out. I said, hey, 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 hey. It, you ain't, you're not supposed to wear it like that. He was like, yeah, I am. This is the way it goes. Why is there not a picture? I, I did take a picture. Where is I, it? I made him turn it around. No. 
And then he laid back in the bed, and that's hey, when I, I ain't no hospital man. I mean, put on a gunner, you put it yourself. But Inside, not, wearing it like a bathrobe. And not yeah, before the nurse came in and said, honey, you got this all know. wrong. I love it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, look, let's let you catch your breath. We'll take our first break. We'll be back right after this. Backed by Bye. 36 years. 36 years of research and development. Now, here we We're go. We're close right. to 37. We crowding it now. Fine, but it can't be found but one place. Boy. Where is that? And that's not in the Methodist Hospital in Houston. That's right. Uh-uh. That's I'll tell you where it is. That's in the pristine waters of New Zealand, boys. There We're it is. We're talking about Omega XL. The first responders. Mm-hmm. You got a joint problem, boys. You got a little pain in your wrist. Hey, pop you a couple of Mega XL pills. Wash it down with some tea. Hey, they put the sirens on. They make it up 150 miles an hour in two seconds flat, and then your problem is solved. No more pain, no more inflammation. Look, and our <laughs> listener, Jonathan, agrees. He says, I'm in my 40s and work at a university not far from Abilene, Texas. The university has a lot of stairs in the buildings. So I'm constantly up and down stairs. My knees and other joints were hurting. After taking Omega for a few days, I could keep up with the 20-year-olds. That's it. Found the it. youth, boys. I mean, what else you want? So thanks, Uncle Si and the Duck Crew, for letting us know about the yeah, Omega XL. <laughs> Look, that he is right. Look, as you get older, your body doesn't produce as many SPMs. Omega XL can help you rejuvenate your joints and start producing those SPMs all over again. And that's that's what's helped Si so far. So look. All you have to do right now, you can order Omega XL and you get a second bottle for free. free. All you have to do, visit OmegaXL.com slash duck. That's OmegaXL.com slash duck. Or call 1-800-844-4888. No, no, 88. 48-88. For not one, but two, two bottles. bottles. And the last one is free. My mom talks about that stuff more than Sasha. She ain't even got a podcast. Hey, I take it every day. And look, uh, his feet are this long. <clears throat> they bring these socks in there, these yellow padded socks. They're like, sir, we need you to put these socks on. And it goes on half of my foot. Half his foot. And and he said, <laughs> he said, Philip, it ain't going on. Yeah, it is. Pow, pow. I'll try. I finally get it on. And it pops off. Multiple times. Finally, he says, "Hey, this, this is uncomfortable." Is it the compression socks? Oh yeah, yeah. no, no. Oh no, that, in bed? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was wondering what was going on. They was fooling around down on my feet. And I couldn't sit. Okay, the next thing I feel, you know. Yeah, you went. You went in for lung surgery. Yeah. And they're down there tickling your feet. Yeah. No, now I'm looking down there and I'm telling, them, "Okay, wait a minute. Hold. On. What's the pink junk that you're putting my feet in? Huh? huh? And then a white thing coming up my leg. But it's then, supposed to then stop I, the clots. Then, then I heard, you know. I felt something. Yeah, the massagers. Yeah. Uh, Keep him from getting blood clots. They, they blew it up. Yeah. And it's to help prevent Compression. blood clots. Yeah. yeah. Compression socks. Yeah. Now, For, forcing your blood to go back and forth so it don't get stagnant. Also, they would come in in the middle of the night and pop him with a shot in the stomach. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's what they did to me when I had COVID in the hospital. They did. At 2 a.m. And it was Woo. the most painful part of the whole thing. Yeah, but here's the deal. That's to prevent blood clots. Yeah, it's what it's called. Yeah. It thins you out. Yeah, but it blood is. Thinner. It is one of them that if a nurse don't know what she's doing, like it's LASIK really, or something. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, it's really painful. She dope popped oh. you in the belly though. Oh yeah, several yeah. times. Gut shot. Oh, they oh, yeah. just Gut grab shot. you. Yeah. Squeeze that uh, p- yeah. walnut pecan <laughs> ice cream. The first time she <laughs> didn't do it right, it hurts. Yeah, first time she didn't do it right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you just put Why they gotta do it in the middle of the night? You know, I have oh, no, 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 many hey. times. Can't y'all schedule this for six a.m.? <laughs> I've oh. been around nurses my whole life because Mama was one, my do- uh, uh, Judy, my oldest sister was one. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I, you know, I, he said no. <laughs> he said I got nothing. That's one thing I could not do. Be a nurse. Nurse or doctor. Well, no, you can't even go to the hospital with your wife. How are you going to take care of somebody I, else? I, I'm, <laughs> Philip, come I'm, pick up the steam. Yeah, Philip's, a, Philip's pretty much a nurse Look, at this hey, point. They said it best. God takes care of children and old fools. <laughs> and I, I'm both of them. There you go. Okay. Both. <laughs> Two in one. That's right. How Two many times one. did you in the hospital go, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho? <laughs> no, no, I said, ah. 
Oh, uh, how many times? How many times? Please, let me, please let me tell this story. Well, go ahead. All right. So I will say, Sai, you were very pleasant to the doctor and to the doctors. There's like a staff of doctors waiting in case something happens. You know, they come and introduce themselves to the nurses. Everybody involved. Sai was really nice. He was a little grumpy, but he was nice to everybody except for. No, no, I think he was nice to everybody. He was, he was yeah, just. I was waiting was for grumpy. the butt. Yeah, I was just <laughs> but here's what oh, he did to I, me. He was grumpy oh. be, just because he's having to lay in for forty eight hours. Oh no, bed. I, it was fun. it was close to it coming up. So he's look okay. when he can finally drink after the you know I guess they did the the procedure and then he was like okay Philip I need my ice I need my tea I need my lemon whatever powder he's got you know. <laughs> So I'm running and going and getting it, and he was like, okay, boys. That's oh. when it started. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey. And then he started no, no. To, to fill up so many of the plastic. Urinal. Because he couldn't get out. He's like, Philip, give me that other one. This one's full. I'm like, call a nurse. Call a, I can't do it. He was like, come on, bring me another one. Bring hey, me another all you got to do is empty it. Bring me the bottle. No, back. I couldn't do it, but I did. A, Finally. Hey, I'm just glad friend. they didn't put a catheter in you for all that. That's a big deal. That yeah, catheter that may hurt. hurt. Oh, no. That catheter no, hurt. No, I don't want to go there. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They <laughs> send him home. He's there now. Hey, they did say. That rascal hurt. Mr. Yeah. Robertson, have you had a bowel movement yet? He said, I ain't going to have one. Don't worry. <laughs> they said, no, no. Well, yeah. no, no. They I was said, all for four days. He said, oh, I can well, hold it four no, days no. easy. He said, well, wait a minute. She said, well, first of all. <laughs> That's kind of amazing for somebody who's so full of. Well, no, 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 because that was the first thing she said. Well, wait a minute. When when did you have your last one? I said four days ago, darling. Yeah, ain't no big deal. I said, but ain't no big deal. I said, hey, look, I ain't gonna have one. <laughs> they got a chair beside him. Yeah. They brought it right beside the bed. Now you can get out of the bed and have a bowel movement right here. He was like, yeah, save it. I don't need it. Yeah. I said, don't hey, put, y'all. No, don't put that one on my yeah. bill. No. <laughs> hey, take that in the way. I ain't going to worry about it. Okay. Question. Yeah. At this point, have you? No, no. Yesterday I had one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making sure because well, four days no, no. seems like a long time. I if I ain't before. had one in <laughs> 45 minutes. Wow. It better not go over a day. I'm worried. I can yeah, tell you I'm right now. Yeah, I'm a doctor I, on day two. I, yeah, I, I can set my watch pretty much by mine. Like it's, very you went four days? Well, no, no. Normally, I have a bowel movement every day. Oh, okay. Praise okay, God. Welcome but, to the duck call but, room. Okay, Praise God. <laughs> with everything going on and I didn't know how I was going to feel, I said, the last thing I want to do is have one of them that, you know, that I've got to really bear down to get rid of. <laughs> Yo, so I just said, no, I ain't gonna have, man, I ain't gonna have a bowel movement. My man so said, I don't bear know, down to kill. Yeah, I don't know if I can be able to handle it or not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, patient side may be my favorite side. <laughs> no, no. If I if I hey. got one, I'm going to bear down on it. Ain't gonna happen here, boys. Uh, yeah, I ain't going through that. You ever heard a home field advantage? That's right. Hey, that's right. <laughs> we go into the house. Hey, I just I'll just take care of this. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So I actually thought about it. I said, maybe I said I thought to ask Christine. Should I call them and let them know that I had a bowel movement? You should have taken a picture of it. You know, hey. Said all good. She <laughs> said he was hunkered over like a dog <laughs> passing a peach seed. Right, hey, was he? Right. You you quivering? No. Say, oh, never mind. No. He had to bear down though. No, hey, I done I done run this thing out where all what I have to do is just tell me, okay, yep, it's gone. <laughs> he didn't have to try. He just had to give uh, it permission. Uh, that torpedo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, I ain't got to sit down and talk to you clowns hey. in a couple of weeks. This is this is good We're here. Back, this is baby. I've been spending all my time alone in a deer stand. This is good here. Uh, Ooh, welcome, man. welcome to Medical One Hundred and One, boy. Yeah. Medical One Hundred and One. Oh man! What you didn't know, you will tell you. So what did you do? You said that 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 Methodist hospital was good to you and everything. What did you have to eat in there? They have good food. Uh, they have good grub. Eh, for a hospital. Yeah, it was decent. Solid. Yeah, it was decent. You was down in Houston. Y'all have like oh, but breakfast, they, breakfast they, tacos uh, and hey, stuff. They, they did have those. Every at the time they come in, inside ask me, the hospital, oh, Miss Robson, what do you want for uh, breakfast in the morning? Yeah, and I said, well, what do you got? Black walnut ice cream. No, oh, yeah, close. Yeah. All I ordered was okay. What kind of soup you got? Is it chicken noodle? I said, give me a bowl of that. 
I said, what else you got? And they're talking about, well, we got mac and cheese. I said, okay. So every time they'd come in and say, what do you want for dinner? I said, hey, bowl of soup and mac and cheese. And ice cream. He and is a said, child. You want to say anything? I said, well, whatever you got, what do you got for dessert? <laughs> they said, ice cream. I said, okay, mac, cheese, and the soup and, and the uh, ice cream. He really is a child. <laughs> and tell me, hey, and tell me, what else do you want? I said, I don't want nothing else. <laughs> That's all I want. I said, give me my mac and cheese, my chicken noodle soup, and ice cream. Now, that ain't going to produce a bowel movement anyway. What were they hoping to get out of you? I, I, hey, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, good night of living. I said, hey, I'm the type that if you find something you like, that's what you keep going because, hey, you don't know, never know. It's a good point. That's like Nolan Ryan. You got to stick with what works. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. And some of the coaches that's playing in the college need to, they need to take that to heart. That's true. Cause you watched a lot that, of football. We did. We oh, did no, watch did. a lot of football. And and what a, uh, who was it? UTEP. UTEP's coach lost the game because he run the ball three times in a row. You watched the UTEP? No. Well, no hey, no. it was Florida. Florida and UTEP. Florida's got us. Uh, Utah. Oh, Utah. Utah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He watched a lot of. He was in bed hey, for forty eight yeah. hours. The Gators have got a bad team this year. Yeah, that's why they got beat by them Wildcats. Well, they? hey, you know who beat them? Kentucky. Kentucky. Kentucky beat him. Kentucky them. beat him. Remember the other night at Stones? Uh, got the Gordon beat. came in and said. That was a fluke. Yeah. Be they careful. got some big horses. We got fans uh, everywhere. That was a fluke. What did they beat them by? 15 or something. Yeah, I don't, I mean, it was, I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, that was a fluke. Hey, Martin, Tennessee's good. Yeah. Allegedly. Oh, allegedly. Oh, Rocky That's, right. That's allegedly. Well, I just got a lot of people excited. Hey, I tell you right now, my woman got taller on that TV so loud, I said, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> We're trying to keep them kids in there. Right. I need you to. I need you to calm That's down. Right. Hey, settle down. Darl. It's the second game of the year. They're playing pit. It, it ain't that big of a deal. But they won in overtime. It's a good football game. We, now we listened to that game while we drove back from Houston. And let me explain. What the balls and pit? Yep. Yeah. But uh, the pilots for patients had a schedule to fly back, but the doctor came in and told Sai, you can't fly for six weeks. And so we had to cancel our flight. I said, no big deal. We'll run down to the you know, rental. rental place and get us a car. Nope. No, sir. They will not let you rent a car and drive one way. That's not a thing anymore? Mm -mm. Even if they do, it's like 1500 bucks extra. On top of the rental fee, I would have so, came and got you for fifty. I would have came and got you as a friend, but well, we got somebody. Old Evil Eye. I'd have met you halfway. For he came sure. and got us over around yeah. Carthage or something. Yeah. Uber we, up we, we couldn't get halfway. Yeah, okay. no, I'm just saying, like we could have. Hey, y'all got to learn the power of social media. Trust me, I know some folks in Houston that would have started driving this way, and we could have just met on the road somewhere. So we got Old Evil Eye. He, networking. He came, yeah, we were networking. Evil Eye picked y'all up? He came and got us. Oh, Evil Eye. Oh, Evil Eye. My favorite was when he was driving and texting, and he had that one eye. <laughs> That's not funny. I said, Si, are we safe? He was like, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. He got it. That's nothing about that is my favorite. <laughs> you should have called Dr. Dean. Dr. Dean. He'd have awesome. probably wrote you a different, a yeah. different prescription. He could have helped us. Oh, he'd have bring his van. I could have went to bed. The paint van. <laughs> Yeah, so he's got his traveling van. It's got beds in it and everything. Kitchen. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does have a real nice uh, van. Shit. He's got a traveling van. That's right. Not to be confused with his daily driver. Yeah. No, he's got a uh, tie hole for that one. There you go. An old one. <laughs> Dr. Dean, baby. Right. You, gotta, you, gotta crawl out, you gotta crawl out the window. The door won't open. <laughs> <laughs> it's the commercial. Oh, you get and in the, it, you get in it through the window, you get out it through the window. Well, let's get out of here and take another break. Right. We'll be back right after this. You know what the best part of having a Stamps.com account is? You don't have to go to the post office anymore? Well, that, too. Well, But the other day, we ship stuff with Stamps.com all the time because we are on Amazon, eBay. I don't think we have anything eBay. on Etsy. But if we were, we could send it there. But I needed to send my cousin something, and I was like, hey, I got a Stamps.com account. This is going to be easy, cheap, and I ain't got to go to the post office. Look, and the most important thing is, like, if you're a small business right now, y'all know what's coming. We staring down the, them holidays that's got all them colors in them, mm -hmm. them Black Fridays and all that mess. And Look, you know what? Shipping is just an expense. It is. I guarantee. All it. you can do to make money by 
shipping is save money. That's that's yep. exactly my right. My dad drilled that one into my head. Hey, and yeah. that's why we use Stamps.com because he used to run a warehouse. Look, and he loves Stamps.com. Look, Stamps.com is your one-stop shop for all shipping and mailing needs. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Get, ac- get access to USPS and UPS services you need to run your business right from your computer with inflation on the rise every dollar counts protect your margins with major discounts on usps and ups rates up to 86 percent off there you go i put 86 percent of my money back in my pocket that's a good deal look use stamps.com to print postage wherever you do business all you need is a computer and a printer and if you need a package pickup you can easily schedule it through your stamps.com dashboard rates are constantly changing with stamps.com switch and save feature you can easily compare carriers and rates so you know you're getting the best deal every time. And if you're running an online store, Stamps.com works seamlessly with all the major shopping carts and marketplaces. Get ahead of the holiday chaos this year. Get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code DUCK for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code DUCK. No, I had a fun deer hunt. It was uh, Wyoming, Martin's. It's back. Wyoming. Yeah, it was. It, oh I love that place. It's cool. We didn't kill nothing, or I didn't kill nothing. Who'd you go with? The guys at Real Tree um, went up there to Seven J Outfitters, and man, if you ain't ever been, if you ain't ever been to Northeast Wyoming, put the, circle that one on your list. Like you, you just need to go to that part of the country. It's beautiful. It, it is. But I was looking. You know, the crazy thing is, for five days. It was hotter there than it was here. Hmm. Oh, it's fall, people. And I told them boys. Just right there. Yeah, I told them boys. I said, I'd rather be at home deer hunting right now. And they said, why is that? I said, because our deer are used to this. Yeah. Y'all's aren't. Ah. Like them deer up there said, they went on a hunger strike. They said, no thanks. We're out. <laughs> you know, and they just, they didn't do nothing. Oh, it was too hot. I ain't yeah. getting up. They come out late and they left early. So it was just. So it was hotter there than it was here. The last evening I hunted, the heat index was like 103. I was walking to the stand. I was walking to the stand like, wait, what? 103? Yeah, in Wyoming. Yowzers. Good grief. So, needless to say, that last evening wasn't very productive, well, nor, it is. nor were any of the other times. But like, it's the best time of year. Oh, it is. Because you walk outside in the morning, you're like, it's fall. And then you go home and you're soaking wet with sweat because it's not fall. It's like fake fall here in the Louisiana. Yeah, faux fall. Uh (laughs) Yeah, and it's like 95 in the afternoon. But you can tell that we're going to get that one week of fall, and it's any moment now. Yeah, it's just around the corner. But, yeah, that was my week in Wyoming. It just wasn't much. But I did have a weird – we went and hung a stand for a deer that these boys been watching. We hung stand four of us. Put stand up in the tree. Got everything done. Got up in the tree. And the deck gum deer was laying right there the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Right beside you? 15 yards from the tree that we hung the stand in. Are you kidding me? And he just watched y'all hang the stand? He watched us hang the stand. Watched me catch my breath after that 400-yard walk. It was at least a half mile. I don't know how far it was. Yeah. But with no Ele- oxygen. Elevation, guy. No oxygen. Oh. So I'm over there sitting on the ground like... <gasps> Wishing I had that backpack. <laughs> and and then so I finally caught my breath. We got stand hung and he didn't move. We was up there beating, banging, sawing limbs, you name it. He did not move till it got quiet. You know when it got quiet? When I got up in the stand and was screwing my little hanger for my bow in. And he took off. And he just stood up and I said, What in the world is that racket? I turned around and looked. There's about a hundred and thirty inch nine point just standing there and I was like, mm. I looked down. My bow still on the ground because yeah. I ain't ready for him yet. Yep. And oh. and obviously there ain't going to be a deer there. We have been beating and banging on a tree. Oh, he's just watching y'all. And he just stood up out of his bed, shook off, and said, deuces, player. <laughs> and just walked on out of my life forever. And then he told all of his friends, hey, by the way, don't go over there. Yeah, I don't know what he did, but. They've been, I said, they've been beating and banging all afternoon. I told him, I said, that, that deer right there remind me of. I don't know what. He's so stupid, he seems smart. He let us sit there and do all that before he said, no, nah, I'm good. Reminded me of Phil's line, though. When you get to slipping, they get to, they get to slipping. <laughs> well, he's up there beating and banging. He didn't care. He's like, they ain't after me. 
We, we got up there and got real quiet. He said, oh, they may be after me. <laughs> he, said, I, he said, I better get out of here. But, yeah, camera for the cameraman still on the ground. My bow's on the ground. The deer just stands up 15 yards. Oh, I got I got a better on that. We, I said, yeah. bye, buddy. We was yeah. like, wood ducks. We field, found a bunch of wood ducks in the woods. Went in there and just, we'd been shooting for 40 minutes. Bam, bam, ba, bow, bow, bow. And it was a little old island over there, all just about as big as this table with some brush on it. We had done one over there four or five times and picked wood duck up that it fell over there. Well, we crippled one down, lift, he hit the brush, we could see him, and I said, Phil, go over and kill that woody, this cripple. You know, so he walks over there and he's walking around trying to find him. He's, you know, boom, he finds six point, st- stands up on the island after he shoots in the brush, kill that woody. He kind of just looked like that, shook his tail a couple times. And, and gone. <laughs> Walked on off. Yeah. Strutted off. Yeah. I Didn't said, you know, because like, hey, they know. They ain't, ain't after me. They ain't hunting. That, he ain't, they ain't after me. They yeah. done been over here five or six times. Yeah, they ain't after me. Yeah. But it is teal season, too. Now, that's been good. Have you been hunting? Every day. How many you kill? 24 a day. 24 a day, boy. Oh, you ain't, you ain't. Full limits. You full limit every day? Wow. What, you are you the only one that's doing that? Well, I mean, Phil and them's on a good average. They've killed one a day. <laughs> oh, they have killed one their day. one a day? <laughs> one one duck. One duck a day. Yep. Who one killed it? Si si killed it from Did the hospital. Stone killed one of them? I think Stone killed the one this morning. There you go. I think they're one. I think they're two for two on ground spots. I always root for the man in the middle that yeah. can't see. Him. Oh, he's on the end right now. Oh, is he? Yeah, because Jace is gone. Si's out. So oh, Jace is gone. I mean, Stone's like second in command right now. Whatever's below general, whatever. So has Godwin got, killed one? Godwin said he ain't even like put a shell in his gun yet. He just sitting He's, there. He bird watching. Bird watching. So, so I'm rooting for Godwin. Who yeah. are you going with, Clay and them? Uh huh. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Y'all on the on Arkansas line here. Right here. Yeah. Twenty minutes from here. Yeah. He ain't gonna tell you much, but right, that's about <laughs> as good as you gonna get. Draw a twenty minute line around this thing and figure it out from there. I'll leave that up to you and the folks over at the hunting map apps <laughs> if you can find us you can figure uh-huh. out which llc it's uh-huh. under good luck uh-huh. which LLC it's under. it don't make much sense but you know whatever it, no it's been good though teal season has been surprisingly good that's why i invited you to go i was hoping you was feeling good enough to go but no. he ain't there yet boys i ain't no happen i ain't hunting till that's fine i may hunt later on this week at the end of it Hey, well, if you do, I'll let you boy. All I got right. the easiest hunt you could ever have. Well, I got that down there at Josh's. Oh, well, I was going to say. We're going to Venice. I can drive you right up to the blind. And you take two steps and sit on a chair. Literally two steps. Martin Martin knows how to hunt. Oh, oh yeah. Boy. He does uh, it the easy way. I didn't Look, know. You work hard in the off season to make it the real prep work. easy. Yeah, the, it's easy now. In the season. It's easy now. My neighbor looked at me a little sideways when I was cutting that cane the other day in our yard, but I call it our yard. <laughs> Mostly hers. <laughs> a lot of us off of them, but I, don't nobody want cane growing in their yard anyway, right. do they? 50, 50, boys. I leave it growing in my yard all year long for this one week. I'm doing like, you a favor. Yeah, I'm just getting rid of it. She just looking at me. I was like, I'd be all right. It'd be all right. Yeah, it'd be all right. What her neighbors yeah, It'd be okay. She probably just ready for a remodel to be over. She the, tired of all that racket around her. In a few years, you just send them boys over, the Martin boys. To them go old Martin, them Martin boys. No, a couple of years, I'm going to put, yeah, I'm going to throw them on the other side of the fence. So y'all hand, y'all cut that and hand that over here to me. We got to go duck hunt. Let's go. What's up, boys? Got to brush the blind. Yeah, amen. Well, let's take another break. We'll be back right after this. All right, level with me. We've all been in a situation at some point in our lives when we were a little tight on cash. Maybe you can only afford to put a few gallons of gas in your tank or you got another save the date and are wondering how in the world are you going to afford it. That's where our friends over at Dave can help. I mean, we have all been there. I've I've, I've sold some things I didn't want to. I, I've gotten rid of things just to make sure that I had the money to do the things that I wanted to do or need to do. So, But with our friends over at Dave, they make it super simple. If you're living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, it can be really stressful when unexpected expenses arise. Now Dave can help you get out of a pinch when you really need it. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, or catch up on bills. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. 
There's no interest and there's no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief that they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and need some help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. That's, I mean, that that is what you're doing. I so like it. All you have to do is download the Dave app from the App Store right now. That's D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve member FDIC. The future you will thank you. I'm thankful everything worked out for Cy with those nurses and doctors and all that stuff. Man, that's a... That's good. Everything. The doctor called me early. Like the lady from the front desk called me and said, Philip, the doctor wants to talk to you. It's supposed to be two hours. So me and Christine and Miss Elizabeth, we all went to um, get grab something to eat. And like 45 minutes later, she was like, hey, the doctor wants to talk to you. So I just took off, you know. I thought if it's that soon, there must have been bad news. So I was like, what, what is everything okay? Mm-hmm. He was like, Philip, everything's great. So I came through so well. Everything's perfect. It couldn't have gone any better. Every time they cut the man open, they say everything's perfect. His heart, they operated on it between beats. Now, that's a true story. I know. I, he's a modern miracle of science. I wouldn't have never believed it unless I heard it. I mean, if you hand. look at him. Look, Not I mean, from him. Look at that chiseled physique. <laughs> that's why I always tell people, look at me really Open your eyes and engage your brain. I'm living proof. God is alive and well. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't. I mean, I am. It's going to be sad. But when you when you go on, we sending your kidneys to a nephrologist. Because them things need to be imitated. Whatever. Because you have put them things through some strain, and they keep on pumping, son. They keep on churning. Hey, they ain't no strain. Tea's good for you. <laughs> Thank you. It's got a bunch of antioxidants in it. <laughs> Any what? Dr. Oz Any, said antioxidants. it. He had That's the, what the doctor said. Very healthy kidney. That's what, what, uh, what Oz? was that? Oz, mm-hmm. yeah. Oz says, he asked the question, who's got the best kidneys out of any of this? And Jessica jumped up and said, I am, because I'm the youngest. He said, wrong answer. He does. Because all that tea. All that tea. Hey, he's what on TV. Think? Well, you got to think about it. Two gallons a day. That's what I'm talking about. That's why we need to study. Yeah. If we can figure out how your kidneys work, we can keep New Orleans from flooding. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) Well, hey. That's all I'm saying. I can't even think of (laughs) I can't even think of the name. Name of who who runs flood control? I don't. The Corps. Corps Corps. of Engineers. Hey, that's who they need to. Educate the core engineer. Yeah, now see, look how these things work. That's how yo should work. Right there. Right. Whatever happened in here, that's, that's right. what yours hey, should do. Right. Mm-hmm. There's in a the new engineer in control, town. Boys. Hey, it don't matter if you got to bleed the lines off and just keep them going, buddy. That's it. Let's <laughs> side go down there and tell them what they're doing wrong. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, he'll, he'll blow the whole mess up. So where'd you get that hat, by the way? It's awesome. I've been admiring it. It is hey, awesome. That came from a fan. I don't even know the name on it because I didn't. You know, I was sitting in the dark in here when I opened it. But it is awesome. <laughs> that there, is, you, there you go. Is that I it? would actually wear that one. It says hey, that it's a Black cool. Panther with the word Pantera on it, and I want one too. Hey. Oh, that thing. That is a bad looking cat, though. Oh yeah. And he had on there attention cat killer. He's a rat killer. No, a cat killer. No, Phillip's a rat killer. Hey, I wouldn't even, hey, to just to prove a point, if I had the chance to kill one, I wouldn't do it. I have a question for you. Yep, I got off. I got a lot of questions for you because I missed you because we filmed like three before you went out for your procedure. Did you watch a lot of PBS or just football? No. No, I watched a lot of football. Man. I was hoping for a I had, no, I hadn't. I hadn't seen a good PBS in a, quite a while. That's disappointing. I thought surely in the hospital PBS would have been. Like I don't know. Well, That's in Texas. Maybe theirs ain't as good as ours. They just watch high school football, junior high football. <laughs> That's all it's on. TV. Friday Night Light, PBS, how to play football, yeah. high school PBS, football. <laughs> PBS, <laughs> PBS has got a lot of good stuff on TV. Oh yeah, it really does. It's educational. Yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, I love it. So 
what uh, what's your future looking like now? So you you got forty five days till full recovery. Forty five days, and then maybe I'll feel better. How what what are we on now, Philip? Uh, what what day was the deal? Wednesday, Wednesday, Seven. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So oh, we're yeah. at Monday, right? Yeah, now. Monday. Monday. Yeah. So we five days in. Yeah. So you're one ninth of the way back yeah, to feeling rough, like and yourself. It's rough too. But it's just you. You just wore out, uh, essentially, yeah. right? You, you you don't hurt. Well, look, you got to think about it. five days. I couldn't get no sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Because every time I was just about to really doze off, and <laughs> you know, ooh, ow. <laughs> you turned into a human pin yeah, cushion. I'm a pin mm-hmm. cushion. Yeah. And we talking about a man who got a nap every day in oh, the yeah. army. That's right. Hey. <laughs> Twenty three and a half years he took a nap every day. That's right. And for hey. five days the Methodist hospital wouldn't let him wouldn't sleep. Let him uh-uh. sleep and then they were, they rolled this X ray machine in. They said, Sir, we're gonna have to do some X rays. They got the lights on. They was like, well, you need to be at least six foot away from Sai while we do this. And Sai was like, no, he's fine. Go ahead and hit it. A <laughs> <laughs> little so bit I, of radiation ain't never hurt nobody. I, I got some secondhand radiation. I'm working pretty good here. No, no. What was cool, they had a team of doctors stand, on standby. You should have held something behind him. Hey, in, <laughs> in, case, in case my lung collapsed. Yeah, Panther. You know, in case my lung collapsed, they had, they had a team of doctors that would rush in. And then blow it back up. Yeah, and put a tube. Yeah, put a tube in. Put a chest tube in mm-hmm. and call it good. Yeah, and then what, what was cool but is But it went swimmingly. That, yeah, yeah, it went great. It. But they came in and they were like, we just want you to know who we are so we're not meeting, you know, if it happens. Yeah. We want to meet you now. We're on standby. You'll know who we are if we, if we need to come in. Yeah. If you see us, things have gone wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Don't yeah. panic. You don't want But to. we're only here yeah. if things go yeah. wrong. But how amazing yeah. We is don't that? want to see you. No. But these days, that's what we like. That's the country, and you know, people bad mouth the medical field a lot because of the cost and all that. But like, I like a place where I can go, and the cost is you know, it is what it is. It's not, we might fix some things. I don't know how to, so don't ask me. But we got a dude who knows what he's doing, and five other dudes that know what they're doing just in case this happens, and one other guy over here in case this happens. All the while getting ice cream. Yeah, just That's waiting. Right. Like, hey, Mac and cheese. sub me in. Yeah. If you need me, I'm here, and I like you guys. Put me in, coach. I just, yeah, that's wild. I like doctors and nurses. Yeah. No, I'm a big fan. Of <laughs> I think we just need to reiterate that. Yeah. No, I'm a big <laughs> I'm a big fan of all of them, especially the ones that kept working through what they went through for Ooh. two years. I mean, Ooh. are you kidding me? Oh, no, that's why I couldn't. The ones that stuck it out, I unbelievable. I couldn't be one because, hey. You don't have any your time. No, because the first time you walked in and somebody was going, <laughs> yeah, change, change, change this out for me. Yeah, you choke no. slam him. No, did you take him a bail? <laughs> no, How no, many no. Times did you I don't want to get buzzer. thrown out. No, he did hit it a few times on accident. They're like, sir, can we help you? He's like, Philip, sir, can we help you? Right? Figure this out. I said, hey. Talk to them. They I want said, something I said, again. Hey, I hit the wrong button. Turn that mess off. That's what he told them. I said, yeah. I told him. I said hey, sorry, hit the wrong button. Turn the mess off. Oh, oh, but when the when the doctor came in and said, Si, now you can get up and move around just a little bit. Sit in the chair if you'd like. You know, you can now you can get up. He was like, okay. The doctor walked out. He jumps up like a young fox squirrel. I mean, cat squirrel. He takes off to the bathroom and he's still got all this stuff strapped to him he's like vroom, vroom. it pulls him line. <laughs> it pulls him back toward the bed he was like hey well, let me take uh, some of this stuff off Sam. Uh, go ahead and unhook me boys i gotta go i he, got tt two days in the bed he hops up revving to go ready to go yep. that's wild man that's monster man for you Boy, hey, ain't anybody do that he's unstoppable i i'm just glad it's all gone as well as it has so far and we're going to keep on we're going to keep on trucking we're going to keep praying it's going to keep doing mm-hmm. the same thing that's good well, so, we'll, well let's take our last break and we'll get in that mailbag when we come back how about that johnny d what's in that mailbag well speaking of we basically got one million emails saying they were praying for si rooting for si worried about si asking how he was doing uh so to everybody that emailed that in as is is crazy. Um, Here he is. Look at we got. Thank y'all. Uh, he is doing great. Um, 
it, like I just got one. I'm one of your biggest fans and need to hear an update on Cy. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I'm one of your biggest fans and need to hear an update on Cy. Please and thank you. Heart emoji, Terry. Terry, thank here you, he is. Terry. Watch Thursday. He's back. <laughs> yeah, he's back. Tune in Thursday. Um, so it was really cool reading all those and a bunch of people calling me a uh, loser for not wanting to eat banana sausage. So sue me. <laughs> um, I'm not doing it. Ever again. Yeah, doing it. All right, Kaz from Covington, Louisiana. And we've kind of had Covington. this question before, but I just think it's kind of important to reiterate. Um, loves a podcast. He's a father of three, and he is having an issue with being able to spend time with his kids. He does say they're his whole world, but he works. he's working to support them and his wife. He works 55 to 60 hours a week. Ooh. Six to seven days a week, which leaves me a little time little time for them. I try to be there for my wife and kids, but it's hard when I'm always at work. Any advice on how to balance both? Welcome to the story of 2022. Yeah, yeah not, I think probably just the story of life in general well, yeah. for, for the most part. I mean, it's just... I don't know. I'm trying to get a plan together. I mean, we're staring down a barrel of somewhere between four and seven weeks before too young and show up. I asked her today, I said, well, what are we going to do? We got to take him things home. Like, so, <laughs> like it's starting to sink in now. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, they don't keep like, them there very long either. No. They're like, hey, they're good. Get out of here. Yep. No, You're yeah. on your own. But I mean, I think you just, same deal we've said a hundred times probably. Communicate with your kids why you're not there, what you're doing, your purpose for being there if your wife just sounds like she doesn't work she gets to stay at home with the kids or something uh, that... it doesn't say that but but if he's working 55 60 hours to support it, him i mean that's just probably what has to be done like it. you know something like that so yeah i uh, really i really like what martin said because you know don't don't try to make up the uh the attention that you can't give them because you work don't try to make it up with things that you buy or things that are fade away spend time with them when you can and let them know why you can't be there as much as you'd like to but once they know that and they understand that i think it would be more manageable yeah my dad was same way grew up working shift work construction work my whole life and i didn't understand why he wasn't there but then once i got older and old enough to understand like oh he's doing that so that we got tv we got air conditioner we got a vehicle we got this you know then it it went from a wonder to a nothing short of respect that he would work his fingers to the bone to provide for all of us. So, I mean, your your kids are going to see this at some point once they get to that point where you, you're you like, oh, that's what he's doing. It ain't, the amount, you know? it ain't the amount of time that you're able to spend with your kids. It's the quality of the time you spend with your that's kids. good point. Hey, he's coming okay. off of a fresh week of rest, guys. <laughs> That's right. He's, he's got it. He's, he's got a lot of time with Jesus. In he's that hitting house. deep <laughs> now, son. That's but a good point. Son. That is right. But I would also say, too, be intentional to carve out time for mm-hmm. him. Like, I know it's not going to be easy, but even if it's an hour or two hours, whatever, if it's take them to dinner where it's just you and them, do something. Be intentional about making time for them. Even with a 55, 60 hour work week schedule. And that's what I was going to say. Because right now, me and my wife are in this weird, like, we do these retreats. She does a women's retreat, I do a men's retreat, and it's coming up in October. And I'm gone every Thursday night at a meeting. She's gone every Tuesday night at a meeting. Then we got church on Wednesday sometimes. And then we got this and soccer games. So it's like, when, whoa, whoa. Yeah. So, like, we've intentionally I, – I had a buddy the other day. He's like, hey, man, I'm doing a little Bible study. It's on Sunday afternoons. And I was like, sounds really good. I can't. Yeah. Because the Bible study is a great thing. But my kids come before my buddies. So Sunday afternoons, we've just said, like, that's it. No, do not plan anything. Nothing comes before – our fa- and we go eat at my parents' house with my sister and her kids. And so every Sunday, my kids know, like, they're like hey, when are we going? I'm like, I didn't even tell you we were going. And they're like, it's Sunday, bro. We're going. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm yeah. glad they know that because they know on Sundays, uh, that, that one time, very specifically, like, we're spending, this is it. Yeah. So that goes with what you said on intentional. Just plan one time a week where you're going to do the same thing every week. Whatever it is, whatever it looks like for your family. Yeah. Maybe it's going to the Waffle House. Maybe it's 
I saw that on your Instagram. I, I did do that. That was just me. That was so scary. I'd never taken three kids to a restaurant before. Yeah. I walked in like ready to just. I saw you had that little one boxed in. Uh, yeah. You, you had her. You had her. <laughs> she crazy, bro. But yeah, but whatever that is. And that's what I did because my wife's gone on Tuesdays now. So I'm like, you know what? Hey, Tuesday's I'm, Waffle House yeah, night. Go. I'm going to. Y'all just, want breakfast for dinner? Let's go, kids. I ain't going to cook for you because yeah. I'm tired after <laughs> work. It's, I get off at six. She drops them off. I'm like. We're just going to go out to eat, and it's going to be crazy, and they're going to make a mess, so I'm going to tip a little better because I feel bad about how crazy we are. But it's just like I want my kids to remember, like, okay, even though it was nuts, like there was just a couple times a week that dad was focused on us. So. Yeah. And one of the greatest things that you have that you possess is, is the ability to choose. So you can choose what you want to do with your kids, how you want to do it, and you can also choose to tell your friends no. And I appreciate that. John David more than somebody saying, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, and then not being able to do it. Just be a man of your words. Say, no, I can't do it. We've got something planned. With oh, yeah, kids. I felt terrible because this is one of my really good buddies. Yeah. And he was like, hey, man, it's going to be awesome. And I was like, I have to say no. Yeah. And it stinks, but, like, that's – and he, he literally said, hey, bro, family first, man. Yeah. Get it. Yep. So – I think uh, intentional. That's Man, that was one of my favorite things growing up, what y'all are doing, though. Sunday dinners with, yeah. with my grandparents. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's what's up. I'm Well, we're eating like, leftovers tonight. Like fried deer steak and whatever she grew in the garden. Oh, man. Oh, give me those days back. Where Why did, did I want to grow up? Man? I don't know. We, we did that with my grandparents every no, month. Sure. Every every Saturday, my dad would catch fish. Every Monday, my papa was cooking them all for yeah. us. Yeah, so, see, that's what's up. Man. So on Sunday nights, we go to my parents' house, and whatever's on sale at Super One is what we eat. They're like, what do you want to eat? We're like, y'all pick. And look, my dad cooks. I've we seen y'all, and look, chops. I've seen these people in this comment bag. There's a lot of grandparents in there. Do this for your grandkids. Do this kind of thing. Really Cook for important. them, like have them. I mean, trust me, as a grandchild, that was awesome. That was one, it was my favorite day of the week. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you're making memories. Yeah. The day you get to go there and just eat. And just eat. And then make a mess and then get yelled at to clean it up for 20 minutes and lose <laughs> And then play shoes. outside barefooted all afternoon. Hey, yep. Why do kids not wear shoes? Why would you? Why every Sunday night we eat and we're all happy and it's like time to go and it takes 45 minutes to find Ben's shoes? <laughs> well, that's because he wants to stay longer. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. He never knows where they're at. We have contests. Whoever finds the shoes gets a prize. Yeah, there you go. The prize is always like a hug and then they get sad. <laughs> <laughs> whatever don't lose your shoes you got one more i do um i got one that's kind of deep and then i got one that's let's go with this one i'm gonna figure this out later i forgot that was a magnet there's a magnet and a knife and a file all <laughs> yeah. stuck together over there we have fidget toys here on the desk in the duck call room because we're all grown children zach 33 from dry ridge kentucky zach uh, has a question um he's gotten older as I've gotten older, I've gotten more into my faith. That's great. I went to church as a kid. Then once high school hit, our family just didn't go. I believe in God and have accepted him as my Lord and Savior, but I haven't been back to church in a long time. Do you feel like you need to go to church to praise Jesus, or do you feel like church just isn't something that you have to do? Well, God could rise up, raise up rocks to follow him. He wants your heart, all right? And we are the church. We're the members the church is not a building somewhere. I mean, it's actually the people, the Christ followers. So no, but communion with your people and with the 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 church. I mean, that's that's important because it builds you up. Yeah, you, you uh, have brothers and sisters in in Christ that you can lean on when you need to. So I would say absolutely, you need to just so that you can make it. I mean, I surround myself with guys and 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 ladies and and people that are going to help me with my Christian walk. Community. Yeah, absolutely. That was yeah. that that line was sick though. What? I can call up rocks that don't go to church if he needs to, but he wants your heart. That, yeah, That's I don't good. think it can be said better than that. Yeah. No, I I mean, church is a great thing, and I mean, going to the building and all that, but. You know, if you're just outright not going, I think that's a bad look. I think, you know, that sounds like you're saying, I don't need that. No, we need it. You need that community to help and you. you. And, like, and you need the people you're sitting next to, or maybe even not next. You need the other people in the building, probably more than the 45 minutes of whatever the dude or is going to oh, say up on the stage. 100%. Like, you might go to church and he might talk about something that's not a 
big struggle of yours. You yeah. might always be joyful, but you know what? Somebody needs to see you there yeah. and being joyful. And you need the people around you more than you think. And if you're in a great spot right now and you're like, hey, life's great. I don't know why I need people. But I will it's say kinda... this too, and this is can be our verse of the day. Do it. Go but for it. First, Do it. First John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. I don't want to miss out on that purification. You know, I want to keep meeting with the brothers and build them up, let them build me up, and rock on. It's real day. Hey, I love it. Si, you got anything? Nope. Send it's us out. Right. You know my favorite part of that verse? It doesn't say from some sin. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's From right. all of it. That's a good point. Every all bit right. of it. All right. Well, well hey, one last thing. Dude, we've ahead. said it before, but you what it was the Met, Houston Methodist. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking care yep. of our man right here. That's right. I we were all praying for you and thank you to all our fans who've been praying for him. Yep. Uh we're glad to have the legend back in the duck call room. <laughs> Are you glad legend. to be here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is, baby. <laughs> I think our man's tired though. So let's get on out of here. We'll see y'all right. next time right here. We're out. <laughs>